Today we're going to do a, uh, an exercise with PVC plumbing pipe. We're going to discuss the gluing, which would incorporate both the priming and the gluing. We'll use different fittings, such as the inch and a half T, inch and a half 90. We have some pipe here that we'll cut to length. The second year students will do an air test or pressure test on it using this testing device at the end. On this particular table we have most of the materials and the tools we'll need. First we'll start off with safety glasses. This will be required when you're doing your cutting. We have both sharpies which mark well on the pipe as well as pencils. Either can be used. Either a tape measure or a folding ruler could be used to do your marking with would depend on the length that you need. Our saws to do the cutting with would be a traditional or typical hand saw. A reciprocating saw, sometimes called a sawzall, would work just fine. The other saw we might use is a chop saw in some fashion. You need to make sure you have an abrasive blade, such as the one on this saw, so that that will cut the pipe real easily. Next thing, Talking about our measurements, initially we just measured our pieces six inches, but for our project we would have to me measure each individual part, including the inside of this fitting right here. You'll notice the, there's a taper. You measure to this long point right here, from there out. You get that measurement on each fitting or on each size fitting. This is an inch and a half PVC fitting. On a two inch fitting that distance would be different. Just very calmly, take your tape measure, put it in there. You'll notice when you look at this, it's three quarters of an inch. And again, that piece of information we need to have. Next, I'm going to show you how you mark. I'm going to set our folding ruler up at six inches because we want, in this case, our pieces to be six inches long. I'm going to put a very small mark with the Sharpie. I could use the pencil to do the same task. Just want to make sure I put a small straight mark. I don't want my mark going off at an angle, that way I'll know that I have it exactly where I want it to be. This method of cutting will be with a handsaw. It's a traditional way of cutting before power tools. This is the way that it can be done. You want to line your saw up on top of your mark, taking nice, long, straight strokes. Not trying to cut too much or too little at one time. Nice long. You do have to work on keeping it straight. There is a couple of ways to do that. Usually you can just do it by eye. This time we'll be cutting with the reciprocating saw. It's another method of cutting this. It takes a little more effort to get it cut squarely, but it's a real common method in the fields. piece now that it's measured using the chop saw. We want to make sure it's all hooked up correctly, ready to go. We have our safety glasses on. We get it close. We line up to the mark where we're going to cut. We want to lock it in place. That way there's no kickback. We'll start the saw and then ease it into the material. We'll cut all the way through. We'll let off the power and let it up at that time under control the whole time we're doing it. Now that all the pieces are cut that we need for our project, we have to smooth off these rough edges, these burrs on the ends. Also in the inside, the pipe, we'll need to clean that up. You can see a pipe here that we've already cleaned up, how smooth that is both on the outside and inside. We'll do a little bit more touch up on that. First thing I can do, one way of doing it, is to take a utility knife and to carefully scrape, just like this, just knocking those burrs off all the way around, inside and outside. Another method would be using what's called a surf foam, or you could use what's called a deburring tool. A deburring tool and a surf foam would work in the same method. I'm just going to clean them off like so. In this, in this method, I'm just knocking those burrs off once again, inside and out. 
The deburring tool would sit on the outside and turn or spin and just shape both inside and out. Next we want to wipe our pipe off to make sure it's clean just on the outside. Just a real quick movement with a clean cloth just to make sure there's no dust or dirt that would interfere with the cleaner and the glue. Next we're going to put our primer onto both the pipe and the inside of our fitting. We're using a purple, that's the standard in the industry. The joke in the industry is that way the building inspectors know you used it. To start with, take the primer, we run it all the way around, we want to get a good coating all the way around the end of our pipe, and we set it off to the side to dry, then we start with our fitting, again going on the inside, all the way around. What primer does, it eats into that gloss or sheen on the pipe so that the glue, when it's put on, will have a surface to adhere to and so that way it will stick and seal as it should. Once this is dried, and you just let it dry as you see here, then you're ready to start gluing. Our next step will be to put the glue on. We've let the primer dry pretty well on all of those parts. Glue, and you can see what it looks like. Very straightforward stuff, available at all your hardware stores. Start with this piece right here, one piece of pipe. I'm going to coat the inside of the fitting first, mostly because when I lay it down, it won't get all over the table and myself. Second, I coat the fitting all the way around. A little bit more on that. Don't want to be sloppy, but you do want to keep moving forward. And then ready to slide the two parts together. I push with a small twist, just a very tiny twist that gets rid of the air bubbles in it and I hold for a count of 10. If you don't hold, this piece of pipe can tend to slide out of your fitting. I'm going to do another fitting and another uh, piece of pipe now on this other end. Just coat the inside of the fitting. Coat the end of the pipe like I need. Pushing them together, small twist, and air bubbles get in there, so when you twist it, it explodes the air bubbles, that way all the air is gone and you get a good tight fit from one end to the other. Should look something like that when you're done. Again, remember your measurements are given from the outside lots of times, and you have to make sure you have that inside dimension to get it right. So you've seen today how we would put together PVC pipe and fitting, a cutting correctly, showing three different methods of cutting. Uh, the marking, of course, was the first thing. We then put our cleaner, our primer on, that's the purple looking stuff. And then after that, and again, we prime a bunch of it at a time. We put our glue on, we slide our pipe and our fitting in. We have a small or short time frame or time window there to work with. You shove your pipe in, you give it a very slight twist just to kill the air bubbles, hold it for about a count of 10, and you should be done with that fitting at that time. When you're putting the PVC pipe together, you have to work in some sequence from one end of the building to the other. It's usually what most plumbers will do. Usually they start at the sewer end and work toward the finish end.